and we're now streaming live. Hello, oh, I'm hello. John. Hello, David. Uh, good morning, I'm John from Broadstreet. And good morning, uh, you're very John. welcome. Hello, David. Uh, you're very welcome to tomorrow tonight, which is today, this morning, because uh, David tends to go to bed around. Is it 6 p.m.? Is it or, uh, okay, okay. Is yeah, 6 I mean, p.m.? Is, is it really? No, 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 no. Nine. Nine, but nine-ish, nine, nine, nine Yeah, it's, it's almost like, uh, never mind, it's almost like the Truman Show, this joke at this stage. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, um, the, 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 the papers aren't even ready by the time you, you're well asleep, so we have to get up in the morning to do them. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> we go straight into the papers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, one second. Sorry, this takes a... I better put us up on the thing. So, how are you, David? Fine, I'm fine. Uh, a very busy week, but um, some very of it of some relevance to some of the issues in the paper today. But a yeah. very busy last couple of days. Yes, and you you had um, uh, two columns this week, uh, which we'll go to after we go through the papers. Okay, if you want to, yeah. Great. Uh, I'm just okay. We're now we're now live on the site as well, so. You'd be glad to hear, David. <laughs> um, okay. Let's see what we can do here. Um, and the, the weather good where you are, David? Uh, it's a, it's a little crisp, but, uh, uh, but but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think um, it's yeah. not bad. You like a crisp, don't you? Or, or light. Uh, I prefer either, uh, you know, very cold snow or, or 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 very light sunshine. Yeah, I'm the same. The Irish Times uh, morning reopening plans could face setback if COVID, COVID cases continue to rise. Uh, well, I mean, it's like uh, you know, there was wasn't there a, a, an ancient Russian invention? Uh, it's, I think it's in the. That film man with a movie camera, stop motion, stop, start, stop, start. This is what COVID's become. Uh, you know, the minute they open up, they shut down. Uh, yeah. it, the impossibility of the universe has become like a, a satirical or parody of human existence. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I think the overarching point, which we've made many times before, is assumption has said, now I've said, we, we, and a lot of other people, we just have to start living. I think with, with the realization we're living with viruses and viruses to come. And it, it, it is not going to be conducive to the material well being or, or indeed uh, the functionality of people if, if we're constantly closing things down worldwide and then opening them up and then closing them down. I mean, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Uh, reveal the country's top COVID breach hot black spots. Uh, court of all fine issued in just three counties. Three counties in Munster have been hit with the largest number of fines for breaches of COVID-19 regulations. Well, I mean, I mentioned last week, uh, fair ball to them as well, that the court people are, 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 are not noted for their respect for authority. Um, although I must say, um, in relation to the protest last week, which I think was the day of last week's broadcast, yeah, no, it, was a most, it was a most dignified protest by the people of Cork. Yeah. Uh, it was like a cry against the suffering, and they're just saying, "Listen, we just need to function, work again. This is getting too, too out of hand." Yeah. Uh, one, hopes, one hopes that the St Patrick's Day parade will in Dublin will will have the same right of peaceful protest expressed with such dignity. Yeah. Well, I I think um, as I say, I knew somebody who was at the march in Dublin, and that mostly most of those people were peaceful in terms of you know. They marched on to the to the GPO unaware of the other incidents up in the Grafton Street. So, well, yeah, I believe that's the case. Uh, it was, um, and uh, Patrick's Day then is a bigger kind of less contentious. Well, I mean, uh, it, it's supposed to be a celebration at one level of what's the uh, day of national celebration, what's good in Ireland, and. Uh, Perhaps uh, it should be more of a day of reflection this time. Uh, uh, mother and baby home survivors face legal battle. The state is planning to fight legal claims being taken by survivors. Well, I mean, uh, that's just no, it's just nauseating. It, it is. It, it, it's absolutely just uh, nauseating. 
Um, Despite the damning findings, correspondence from the state claims agency indicates it plans to fight the cases by arguing um, they, fought, <laughs> they fought outside the statute of limitations. Well, but it, it, I think I said that <laughs> uh, a couple of weeks ago in this program. I predicted that they, they, they would say that. Yeah. Let me put let it, let me put it this way. There is no statute of limitation for crimes against humanity. Right. Breaches of universal jurisdiction. So there's no statute of, of limitations for war criminals, people who perpetrate genocide, ethno, uh, ethnic cleansing, whatever. Um, in, in many respects, the, the Magdalene Laundries uh, and the Mother and Baby Homes thing it is similar in terms of equivalence uh, and could be classified as a form of crime against humanity. And therefore, to plead, to plead a technical legal defence, I'm in danger of giving arguments to those who will support the uh, mother uh, and, and babies in this uh, heroic struggle. To, to use a type of technical legal defence in this particular context, I think should be set against uh, the immorality of using such a defence. Now, immorality has often little to do with legality, but we do have a, a, a much trumpeted but underutilised document called the Irish Constitution. And I'm sure some creative or inventive judge should be able to establish that the statute of limitations in this particular context is subject to constitutional provisions. But it shows the sheer petty mindedness uh, and complete lack of moral conscience uh. and cognitive dissonance are uh, a dissonance uh, of the state in, in, in opposing meritorious applications of this nature. Well, um, if successful, the approach adopted by the SAA uh, would significantly damage the prospects of survivors who opt to seek damages by way of the courts rather than through the expected redress scheme. Um, when you say crimes against humanity, does that mean that this has to be taken to the Hague, the, the, these, these questions? Well, well, no, no, not, not, not necessarily. These are principles of international law. Lex Lab established principles of international law and, and ought to be capable of being recognized uh, in, in a domestic context. Have within. they before? I mean, is there any precedent for this in Ireland? Well, we, we've established a whole series of uh, unspecified constitutional rights that we've read into the constitution. And um, some of those rights could be uh, utilized in this context. There's an old case called Building Chemicals v. Bulger, which said that principles of private law are subject to constitutional norms. So I think what you could argue would be that irrespective of any principle of private law, which is what a statute of limitation is, yeah. containing in the interest of efficiency, tortious and contract claims, should, such should be subject to the higher law of the constitution and obligations in international law terms, ergo omnis, which are against all of humanity. Uh, and there are parts of the constitution article 29 which refer to uh, international law there's also a whole series of rights we could possibly almost have an academic seminar on it now but i think it, it, it is the sort of argument that could be raising now the, of course the reason they want to put them into the redress scheme is to cut down the costs typically irish mm -hmm. they don't want to they don't want to compensate them appropriately well um Let's move on because uh, they just uh, let's go. Let's not go, let's not go too angry on a, on a Saturday. Yeah, morning. well, I, I was I think measured on. Yeah, uh, uh, the Irish Daily Mail, um, Harry and Harry and Meghan. Did you watch that, David, or any of that? Uh, well, I was. Uh, uh, well, I, I was force fed it. Yeah. I, I was told to get inside, uh, get, get in touch with my Daily Mail sense, uh, and not to be so much of an egghead. And, and so ultimately, I, I did watch it, and I, and I also watched uh, uh, Pierce Morgan walking uh, uh, exit pursued by a bear yeah, walking yeah. on stage. Uh, in, uh, um, uh, I, mean, I don't want to trivialise it. It does. It does raise. It obviously raises very important issues. Um, and um, I mean, I, you know, there are young it, couples. Really? I, well, I mean, at one level, it does. Yeah. One left Did we down. suspect the royal family might have had a racist uh, bone in their body? I mean, I, mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, well, I thought the, I thought the, um, the charges thought, against the family were a little weak. I thought, I thought there were much one more. Would, one would have thought that the queen has met everybody in the planet and is probably color, sex, race blind. One would hope so, anyway. But, but, but um, Charles is very woke, isn't he? In that sense, I mean. Uh, he was 
woke before woke was a thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, um, I mean, right in, in terms of, uh, you know, I mean, um, uh, the race thing. I, I, you, I, you don't know the, the, the distinction between someone's subjective perception of something and whether it's backed up. And obviously, there are a young couple who've had enormous, uh, excessive scrutiny imposed. Yeah. I just think it's a nightmare for anybody who wants to join that, who, who gets involved with that family. The Princess Diana thing is perhaps the classic illustration of that. I mean, it, 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 is, it is that you're an outsider come to sup at the top table in a way. Yeah. I mean, it must be, it must be very difficult entering, uh, entering that world. Um, um, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, uh, okay. uh, I don't know the ins and outs of it. Um, are, you, are you familiar with this trial in uh, this um, the uh, Jason Corbett, the, um, the Irish man? Who was... I read the story that there has been outrage that uh, a retrial has been ordered in a serving prisoner uh, in relation to a murder she was yeah. involved in perpetrating. Um, uh, I think people can. Well, first of all, she served, I think, six years already. And uh, a retrial is not necessarily, of course, the path towards innocence. It, it merely means that certain procedural substantive issues went wrong in the initial trial. Uh, uh, evidence may not have been there, breaches of due process. Uh, there's a sense that the trial was conducted in an unsatisfactory way. The public often, uh, in, in sensationalist headlines, uh, don't understand, as I do as a criminal practitioner on a daily basis, the minutia of what can go wrong in a trial process, even with the best of intentions of everybody involved. So it, it does seem to me, with all, even though the family are obviously upset about it, that there may be legitimate legal reasons um, that the court have ordered a retrial. And a retrial, of course, it, it is not a declaration of innocence. If it was, if they felt that it was an innocence situation, perhaps we're talking about a quashing a conviction entirely, or yeah. perhaps a claim for miscarriages of justice, or uh, within the Criminal Procedure Act 1993, uh, it, it is. It does not seem to be that. It's extremely um, tough on the family. The Irish, uh, Martin uh, and Biden to discuss vaccine supply. Um, yeah, great, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the new Marshall Plan. They'll ship us the vaccines all the way from America. Yeah. We'll send them um, Shamrock and Melk if that's in the Yeah, well, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe they can drop them in in, in, in St. Patrick's Day uh, while we're all having a, a discussion about COVID and a protest about it. Maybe the Americans could come over with planes and just parachute them down like they did in the Second World War. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, supplies coming coming into the country. Um, it's a, it's a I mean, geopolitical... It's, it's, it's reached parity at this stage in a way. Ah, yeah. I, which is not to undermine the very awful real human issue that the Brits have been pretty good about rolling out the vaccines by age group and now my age group as well. Right, have I, you had it, uh, David? No, I'm scheduled to have one, but I've been so busy. I've been You're staying gonna have it. I've been staying well no I'm having it quite soon. Yeah, yeah. But are you, you're gonna tell you're gonna have it you know you know reservations regarding the um, um I plead the fifth privilege against self and privilege. Of course, yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, I mean, rather, I rather not say. Uh, no, 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 that's fine. No, no, no. Obviously, uh, I mull things over in my mind before making a decision. As I get older, I get uh, much to I think the chagrin of some people. I become more meditative and more slow, uh, despite my tendency to shoot from the hip. So, I, I uh, all I will say is I'm within the age group. You're within. Oh, right, right. Um, well, I certainly. I'm not going to take it. So I guess I'm resigned to the to the untouchable. You know, I'll be part of the un, untouchables. Uh, the yes, well, of course. I mean, I I think. Well, I mean, I think that's a very important point. I think that if you don't take it and uh, the borders open up again, then you there will be these vaccine passports, which will I think include a lot more yeah. than just the data about your COVID compliance or your health status. Yeah. Uh, but they're very worrying things indeed, and we've spoken about them before. But but I would imagine that there will be some sort of embargo on travel of any meaningful nature if you are not uh, a bit, you know, given the COVID clear. Uh, but, um, it's, an extraordinary, it's an extraordinary universe that we're entering into. 
it, it, it's almost like a, a, at one level, the whole vaccination process has been at one level a kind of dehumanization process, um, which is not to say there are good intentions behind it, though whether the results mask the good intentions is another issue. Right. Um, were, you, are you, were you familiar with the story of the uh, uh, PhD students with disabilities? Uh, no? No, okay, we'll, 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 we'll go back to that. Uh, raw public anger at Davy. Um, Davy Stockbrook. Yeah, group. no, I, I, I'm very yeah. familiar with that. Uh, yeah. uh, um, I mean, it shows, uh, it shows the absolute utter greed and rapacity of Ireland. Um, do you know and, any of these characters, uh, Davy? Did you, were you? Uh, I, I know, no I, names. I, I've never represented them, but I know people who know them and have had dealings with them. And I know how much they profited from other people's misery. I, I also know that uh, through indirect routes of people who I have represented that the fullness of uh, the awfulness is not out there in the public domain yet. No. No. But but I, the, the problem is, the, the early Roman kings, as Bob Dylan calls them, they're not really going to be sanctioned. Uh, they, they get away with their millions and zillions scot-free while inflicting austerity and misery on everybody else. Well, I think um, there's, there's some uh, reckoning, really, with this, isn't there? Uh, the, the, it doesn't look like Davy will survive this in, in, in any meaningful sense. 16 people have lost, have resigned. Um, the bond's desk is closed. I, I, I'm not, I'm, but yeah, uh, I know. But uh, Irish I, I, thing I, imagine, I imagine lots of assets are sequestered in remote jurisdictions, and uh, the damage has been done. Um, and yeah, it brings uh, us back to a question, which I think is kind of fundamental, really. Uh, no measure for measure. Nobody should be entitled to. People should be entitled to be remunerated in accordance with the best of their abilities. But nobody should be entitled to be exploitative or to have too much remuneration. And we, we, we're a society that, uh, during the tiger economy, completely lost perspective on everything. And none of those tendencies or trends have been corrected by the opinion makers of Dublin. In fact, they pander to all of them still. People like David McWilliams talking about the growth after the pandemic mm -hmm. uh, and the growth that does exist, which is really just the growth for corporate Canadian American vulture funds to take money out of the country and not redistribute it in any equal or meaningful way. And the gradual sense of the country is being run by a small oligarchical elite and the minions around them. Well, there you have that. Um, yeah, Mike Williams is, is, is the dog. His, his book festival is sponsored by a bank and, and one of the judges of the books of the year is Pascal, Pascal Donahue. Oh, I bet he'd be a very good star. Judge, yeah. Pascal Donner, yeah. Tremend no, no. I'd imagine he, he'd have tremendous personal taste. <laughs> I, I, I think personal taste is so warped into the <laughs> game. Um, this chap is uh, Daniel Kinnan, um, and he's going into the football business. So they, the headline is Don Golioni. I feel it's quite good. It's, hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, is that the song? That's the, the, the Irish song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the sun, the sun has always come up with good headlines. You know, Freddie Starr ate my hamster. Okay. Uh, 40 years ago. Yeah, I know, but it just seems that it, they spend more time in their headlines than anything else. But at least yeah. it, it's a skill, as you might say. Are their worst ever headline, uh, The Truth? Do you remember the Hillsborough? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I, I can't say their headlines have been always in great taste. <laughs> no. Um, this is a Corky Mineco City Hall virus unit unused. Uh, but that, that, that is disgraceful. You know, is it, or, or it, maybe it's administrative o oversight. I mean, it's all hands to the pump. If civic facilities and public facilities exist that could be utilised at low cost for the public good in this context, well, they should be. Okay. But, so it's a bit like City, um, City West in Dublin. They have a, like an overflow hospital. Yeah. That was never used either. Well, we specialise in Ireland in building white elephants, don't we? Uh, civic projects that seem good at the time and actually uh, 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 end up achieving nothing. Are you with um, the, Are you on the GGs? Uh, we're Irish? back to that again. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no. Uh, you're not. A, you're not a... No, 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 no. Okay. I, I, I'm not just to say, just to say that well, I, I, I have friends who are in, who are very much into horses, and I, I, I you know, I, I know a lot of people who um, 
colleagues of mine who uh, chastised me gently. The Chief Justice of Ireland, Frank Clark, is a sports of kings guy. And mm-hmm. he's all, he's always in Cheltenham or places like that. So by, by <laughs> osmosis, much as I tried to block it out, uh, I, I know uh, bits about it, yeah. Okay, well, um, Cheltenham is, is starting again. Do you want to look for All right, right. Well, will anyone be able to travel there, though? Uh, vaccines for all over forties by Easter, uh, David. That's yes, but that, that's a part of the, that's part of the, the arriving in. The, the Brits have been very organised about this, and um, uh, there's no doubt that that, that they've been quite. Uh, in this, in that sense, their handling of the of the COVID thing has been much better than the Europeans and Ireland, which of course contrasts with Martin going in the begging bowl to Joe Biden to try and drop. Because if Martin's talking to Biden about vaccines. That is because he's trying to short circuit the EU because the EU supply of vaccines has been so badly handled. It, it, that must be the logic behind it. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, so it's great I mean, that they're using vaccines to, to conduct war, basically. <laughs> there's a vaccine trade wars now. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, uh, the f- well, it, it, it's a point about our universe. I, I, I think we might like. To, to address. You did send me a story uh, uh, which I might deal with some of those later. Uh, the, the Sarah, Sarah Everhard um, the Vigil. Is that, what, is that the one, David? The Vigil. Well, the- I, I just believe it's now going remotely, but 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 I mean, it's obviously uh, 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 d- disgraceful um, and uh, violence against women is to be condemned in, in, in all circumstances, and of course, uh, murder uh, against anyone is to be condemned. Particularly, of course, if a state official uh, commits murder. I mean, I have um, gone on record many times condemning police officers who engage in criminality uh, uh, and murder. Uh, and Joe Public often doesn't fully appreciate uh, the level to which that happens. Certainly in Ireland. But it's utterly shocking. And of course, it does raise a theme which may not be presented precisely in the facts of this, but that there, there has been a rise of violence. And there's also been a rise in the pandemic of coercive behaviour in domestic contexts. And all of these are disturbing, very worrying social trends. Um, um, and you about to, about to divide a policeman today. Um, I'm sure there will. I'm sure, I'm sure, I think they've called it off, but there will be, uh, except remotely, but many people sporadically will want to show their empathy and sympathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, also, um, I shouldn't think the police will get very involved at all. Well, I would have thought this is a a situation uh, where the police should do what's called soft touch policing or or as limited involvement as possible. No Um, No touch policing. Um, please bid to silence vigil sparks fury. Well, well, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, one one has to. Sorry, I, I think one also has to say that just because someone, I hate to be my even-handed sense about this, but just because someone is charged with the crime of murder does not mean that they have committed it. Um, so I just have to balance things out that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Though, though obviously if the police themselves, but but when one doesn't, it, the matter is sub judice in that way. I have to wear my legal hat on that point, which is not to underestimate the force of the point I was making of the condemnation of violence against women and coercive behaviour. I condemn unequivocally. Uh, yeah, the um, we, we've been given a lot of information about this this uh, this man, the, the police guy as well. It, it, it's uh, more than you would expect, you know, from... Well, I, I would imagine um, some members of the force are legitimately horrified. Of course. Ah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Was, I mean... And, um, you know, I mean, I wouldn't say, you know, I've had... I, a largely positive experience of dealing as a professional with English police officers, I must say. Right, right, yeah. Um, so I'd imagine, you know, your decent Dixon of Doc Green, of which many of them still are, would be 
horrified, or the modern variations of saying, will be horrified by the, 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 the rotten apple as they perceive it. Um, but again, that is not to prejudge any outcomes. Okay, it's a very unusual story as well. Uh, Racing Post again. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. By Cheltenham. Um, Education Secretary, this is the UK's action, admits school pillow talk with his poor missus. How is it for you, Betty? D minus. What's that about, David? Uh, uh, well, I, 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 I don't know. I suppose. Um, All right. Is, is it a comment on the Education Secretary's? performance as education secretary since all the schools are closed. I mean, no, I'm it's, often, um, it's about his uh, performance in, in bed, I think. Uh, education secretary says his wife points out his failings while they're in bed. Oh, his failings, like she'll talk to him in bed and say that like you're rubbish at your job. And Well, I mean, uh, there's no, you know, uh, we all need men and women to kick up the proverbial bottom occasionally. Um, um, and, so if those uh, conversations are, uh, if you were, if you were, if you were one of the persons in the conversation, you probably consider it to be a private matter. Well, you you would have thought that, and you wouldn't like it in public uh, <laughs> uh, at all. Um, <laughs> and whoever whoever, you know, uh, uh, what did Pierre Trudeau say? The state has no place in the bedrooms of the nation. Yeah, I'm not sure in this photograph how many people are in that bed. There's him, and then there's two people there. And there's a <laughs> there's a um, a dog of a kind of a hound there in the corner. Well, I don't. There may have been a bit of cre creativity in the construction, but I don't know. Yeah. Well, good lord. Anyway, um, so David, just go back to your column then. I mean, the the themes of your columns last week were um, pretty much what we spoke about today, weren't they? I mean, they were the kind of... Uh, but you, you sent me a story from, I think, the BBC um, be, because it was something that I had expressed in the first column on Human Rights and the Panopticon uh, about the, the Irish police, I think, condemning the radicalization of young people and the way that young people are being brought into... So not radicalization, the yeah. way that young people are being groomed into the drug trade and they are destroying their lives and futures. Now, for, 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 for once, this is a good sentiment on behalf of the Irish police, no doubt. And it is a phenomenon I identified in um, and rep representations that in the southeast of London, there's what I would call, a, in other parts of London, I don't want to confine it geographically, there's the development of, of the Pixotti phenomenon where younger and younger people are getting involved. In the drug industry now, the, the 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 point about this that I've made, which might be deemed by some people to be very controversial, but but I don't think it is. It's a point made by Roberto Savioni in his book Zero Zero Zero, right. is that the models of corporate and drug organisations are blending into one another, and in a universe where we've abandoned the public sphere and focusing on markets, you can see how people are induced into this as just another business. These kids are like these even kids business yeah. of destitution and a business of destruction. These kids are like um, Deliveroo riders for... Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's kind of what it ultimately amounts to. And you, you, when you defend the, the, when you defended that uh, guy in court, you were saying the last... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on yeah. So, yeah, so, but... Right, what's, yeah. What's, well, I mean, I, I, mean I, 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 defend, I defend all sorts of people and all sorts of issues. And, is, there, is there a defense? But, but I, let, let me speak in general. Um, one of the themes of this broadcast and reflecting in the first article is my concerns in general about I inequality in a coercive universe, whether that be in a corporate context or in that context. In technical terms, that plays out a in a criminal context, often in the utilization of the defense of duress, where you're the uh, lowest person down the line. Um, and the, the point Savioni is making is this command-driven culture of yes boss has been exported to corporate organizations as well. The other point which I've mentioned ad nauseum is that in a universe where people are sold and peddled by advertising consumers and the lures of this lifestyle, uh, and yet they're not given access to opportunity to build themselves out of the poverty trap, particularly in the present climate. The, the problem is, I think, multiplying at certain levels. Um, uh, it is all well and good, and one can preach it, and I do to a point, to emphasize uh, 
And I, no life is ever going to succeed if there's not an element of self-discipline. I hate to sound like a preacher in that respect. And, uh, and <clears throat> it, it is important to take control over things of whatever age. But, but, but equally, even if you exercise enormous self-discipline and enormous hard work, there reaches a point that if, the, if you're not properly supported, it's very difficult for you to build yourself out of uh, the sort of situation that you were born in and the structure and the community you were born in. Um, sometimes my advice comes to certain sorts of people that they have to abandon their particular uh, part of the universe and move elsewhere, um, um, hopefully to more receptive uh, and encouraging uh, new uh, influencers. Um, and the difficulty in that context becomes now in the present environment uh, of lack of geographical mobility. And then there's the question of investment. There's also the larger structural question of how much value we now attach to formalized education in terms of a job market, which is shrinking. It, it is one of the ills of our age and an almost insolvable conundrum. But I do think environment investment, uh, structure, support, Okay. Rather than outright condemnation of. The, but the, then the, I'm aware. The, these um, drug mules, the young drug mules, when you go to court in Ireland, for instance, is there, there must be some provision for these guys. Like, if you're well, a kid, you are just well, they, 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 Yeah, they could, um, well, I mean, it's more likely that if it's a multi-count indictment, that the, the lowest down the indictment will be get the lowest sentence yeah uh, yeah but he's done and, them. and then there's also the question of uh, duress and coercion prevention is always better than harm um but but the point in that context is that um you know often they are ensnared into this for financial incentives and perhaps a degree of financial preying i mean one really has to understand in the present universe at all sorts of levels um, you know, uh, something you wouldn't publish yet, but, but, you know, Jean Valjean in Victor Hugo's Les Miserables is prosecuted for the theft of a loaf yeah. of bread. But bankers like Goldman Sachs are not in prison. Uh, the law has historically often worked disproportionately. Justice should be blind. And the old Bailey motto is uh, very strangely protecting the children of the poor and the innocent as well. And it, it is important to realise that um, in terms of disproportionality and who we who we go after. And it's also important to realise the, the situations that people find themselves in where they resort to this. But but mm -hmm. my outright condemnation goes to the, you know, the, the law and order mob screaming from the rooftops and doing nothing about structural investment. The drug problem was caused by, at one level, built, putting people in dehumanized urban living spaces in Ballymon, moving them from perfectly lovely little houses in the Liberty. And only 25 yeah. years later, yeah. they, they, they finally build lovely little houses opposite the tower blocks, which they're dismantling after they've caused all the problem in the first place. Um, so when we talk, uh, uh, when we condemn people in this way, uh, then the realisation should be to provide people with adequate methods of state support. And in a device society like Ireland, for well, Okay, okay, James. Really you, okay, I'm hobby horse. You are, you, yeah, you, you, can, you can round it a little bit. Else, um, but in terms of, you get a kid, right, who's, who's, who's caught, say he's 18, 19, whatever, yeah. uh, 17. He's caught. He's just the courier. He's just the mule, right? Yes, I've seen them lower than that. I've seen them 12. Okay, yeah, but that, that would be more juvenile. That would mean that they wouldn't get a yeah. sentence, perhaps, or... They get what's over here, what's called a youth referral. Yeah. And the judge would, would, judges would generally be sympathetic. They'd understand what's going on here, that these people are the low-hanging fruit, that they're... they're... Yeah, the, the, the understanding is one thing, but the, the, the gang culture that's developing is also something that the, everyone is very, very concerned about. Um, and well, no, more, no more than him, like the kid who's, the, who's being taken in then, because he's got the gang. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, 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 I, mean I, I think the point is questions of proportionality and sentencing, seeing if the particular individual in question has a legitimate defence, and measure for measure, 
treating that particular person more leniently. Um, but it is salutary and right for, for once for the police in Ireland uh, to exercise civic responsibilities and warn people that of the slippery slope and of the fact that by participating in this way, you're endangering your entire life. Um, yeah. You know, I, yeah, um, well. and it, it, is, it is an important thing to say. Mm. Yesterday in your column, you were talking about Orson Welles, uh, that, um, that you, you, you met him and you had a good long chat with him in the gate. Well, I met him once in the gate theatre. That's people incredible. Say, yeah. well, well, it was, it was, it, the point is that um, people don't really know this, but, but, but some educated Irish people of a certain generation are very, very much aware of it. But, but Wells made his reputation in Ireland. He trekked over here on... Everybody. Back, David, everybody knows, David, everybody knows that. Oh, right. okay. Well, yeah, he was yeah. in the gay theatre and he'd come back and visit old friends periodically. And, That's wonderful. And, yeah, that? yeah, but you didn't, I didn't really know who he was. <laughs> uh, right. met him, you know, uh, but, but you couldn't, you couldn't avoid... Uh, once you saw him. Uh, yeah. And what, uh, yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, not only did you know who he was once you saw him, but, but, but once you uh, saw them, you know, the sheer yeah. fantastical, the cake yeah. or cake, cake over him, uh, yeah. hats everywhere. Sherry. Uh, oh, well, I mean, uh, I mean, I, I just think there was something of males of that generation, um, w- which I don't think we should emulate, but, but somehow they got away with it. Uh, they uh, struck me that, like, McLean Moore, who was himself, self you know, like, invented character, accepted yeah. Orson, who was, pretended that he was a prominent. Oh, yeah, I, I, I hope, yeah, I, I, I hope people, they, they're, they're both kind of, you know, they were both magicians, and yeah, Wells in the famous film, uh, F for Fake, about being a magician, or, or the art of illusion and fakery. Yeah. And th- there's no doubt that acting uh, and performing at one level is a, is a bit like that. You could say, uh, turning the lenses on myself, you could say that uh, the courtroom at one level is a performance, but it's a performance where you must do more than just learn your lines. <laughs> you have to have the hard data as well. But, but um, you know, I mean, it takes one to know one. I mean, MacLeamo didn't believe a word of what Wells was telling him, but, but it, it set this tremendous trajectory of a career Amazing. Um, really and, and, but the reason I brought him to the article was again to do with coercive behaviour because Wells plays the legendary American trial lawyer Clarence Darrow in the film Compulsion, uh, which is about the Leopold and Lowe case. And it's a very disturbing feature I see again, you know, for age, of how over entitled, very rich people feel that they are above reproach. The Leopold and Lowe case is that two. Um, two preppy rich uh, boys uh, uh, k- killed someone. An eight-year-old boy, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, b- because of um, their sense of ubermensch superiority. Now, you really do see that mindset in the corporate culture. Of course. And, yeah. and, and you see that mindset in elements of Irish society with their over sense of entitlement. It, it is, they just feel that if they are, to coin Margaret Thatcher's phrase, one of us, they are above reproach and above criticism and above the law. And it's most noticeable, isn't it, in the context of uh, the prosecution of uh, the police officers, justice officials, uh, who were themselves knee-deep in criminality and framing people for child sex abuse, that we, we, we don't see them prosecuted. There is a huge double standard going on in Ireland about official Ireland. But it's not just about that type of coercive behaviour. It's coercive behaviour of any sort based on inequality of bargaining power and age that troubles me greatly. What one tries, as one gets older, to try and... I mean, I'm, I'm very much in touch with my youthful side, but not all of your readers in this yeah. certain agree. But, 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 and I, I think I'm reasonably good with people... You sound, terrible. you sound like you're terribly old. Then. No, 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 I'm not terribly. But, but the, point, but the point, 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 point being that you've got to approach people on an egalitarian basis and you can't say I'm superior to you because most of the best people I've ever met, you, you might know them from an, ad, an adult uh, or the position they occupied until they, they asked you and they came up. Uh, mm. I don't think, I think it is the, the warning sign there that I see 
is also a warning sign, an increasingly stratified age based on wealth and feudal capitalism of the abuse of a dominant position, to quote the European expression, uh, of course, the relationship structures in business, in the professions that lead to criminality and the non-assumption of responsibility of people in power for their own criminality. And so that, that was the analogy I was seeking to draw uh, in it. And, and I thank you very much for publishing it. Oh, um, no, no, my pleasure. Uh, it's, it's on the site. Uh, both God. of them. The penultimate. But, 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 but it, it, it's all symmetrically how ma many of these coercive things, we mentioned the, 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 the young children involved uh, or young adults being brought into the drug things as drug mules. Yeah. And we've mentioned, we've mentioned also aspects of the rise during the pandemic of coercive behaviour prosecutions. And yeah. um, th there is no doubt uh, that an age of crisis in, uh, such as ours is, is creating more and more capacity for people to be mined and exploited, both in terms of their data, in terms of sexual violence, in terms of murder, or in terms of their participation in activities that they shouldn't be participating in. So although it's, it's good for the Irish police to issue that stern warning, perhaps the government could back it up with some infrastructural investment. Okay. Anything light to end on, uh, James? Just... Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, no. Are you into I just think that um, I, I've met uh, in my life some very colourful people, yeah. and the, the only the only uh, person that I've ever seen consume as much alcohol in a short space of time as I did from a distance watching Wells was Christopher Hitchens. One doesn't un, unregulated bohemianism is a bad idea because it leads to self destruction, but but unregulated corporatism leads to the worshiping of the gods of order efficiency in the market. I think, you know, if you would say something light, I think we need to, in Ireland, re-embrace the character as well as the corporate beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're losing. And MacLean Moore was a great character. And um, I've, I've privileged to meet a lot of them. There's a, a guy called Patrick Healy, who's a professor of, yeah. uh, in, um, in Holland now, who's a great, oh. great Dublin character. And the, the Dublin, and Adrian Hardy, Supreme Court judge was a great Dublin character. Being a character, uh, which was part of the colour of Irish life, you know, uh, mm. it doesn't mean you're not a top class professional at what you do. I mean, the Gay Theatre has been a worldwide success. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and uh, MacLeamore and Hilton Edwards built it up, and uh, and under Michael Colgan and, and and so on. Um, um, light. If you was to say something light or light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. I would say this, that one very disturbing thing that's appearing in all the newspapers, and it may seem heavy initially, is the deterioration, decline in mental health during the pandemic. No, it's something that troubles you greatly, uh, John, because the focus on putting people in lockdown is destroying and dehumanising them in terms of not just liberties and movements and rights, but in terms of their mental health. Yeah. Um, so um, if we want to be really light, why don't I suggest the following? Why don't people start reading some books, getting some rest, drinking a few glasses of wine in the evening, but not too much, going for a little bit of a walk and cutting some wood? Let, let's go back to our pastoral sense of uh, a quality of life and to get through uh, the, the awfulness of all of this, which is not to suggest that we should be protesting about the yeah. destruction of our we lives. have to go to bed at 7 p.m. though, Davis. I mean, that's, no, no, no. It, it, that's it's too early. Nine to ten. It's nine to ten. We don't have to go. To nine, 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 nine. But, 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 but nine ish. But, 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 um, nine. I mean, I, I try to, you know, I'm trying to be live a balanced life. And I think, um, if there's one good out of the lockdown, which is the portal, as Arunjat Roy talks about, it, is we all should undergo a process of collective and individual assessment. We've been living too fast, too market-driven, too greedy for too long. Okay. We, need to, we need to re embrace values of community friendship under real threat when relatives are not seen before they die. 
and early nights. Okay, David, thank you so well, much. Well, or relatively story. early nights, yeah. Certainly not the nights Orson Welles kept. Yeah. No, no. Oh, um, or it's exotic. Yeah, yeah. Well, his, his mates in Ireland then, because Mike Leamore was dead when you'd met Orson Welles. Yeah, no, I mean, he just, he, just, like, he just reappeared, like, like apparently, like a, like a magic trick. Fantastic, yeah. 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 But, but uh, 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 people say his career was completely... Uh, because of the whole Citizen Kane debacle, uh, but 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 the achievements afterwards are great. I mean, I think his uh, Shakespeare films, particularly the one about Falstaff, is a total masterpiece. The yeah. documentary F for Fake is worth reading, and funny enough, Touch of Evil is very great. Touch of Evil is a total masterpiece. Yeah, he's, and, he's brilliant uh, in it, actually. and he's brilliant in it. And he got everybody uh, of his friends to appear in it. Um, funny enough, uh, Peter Bogdanovich in the La Labour of Love reconstructed his last film, The Other Side of the Night, and came out last year. Oh, really? And, yeah, yeah, and it's available mm -hmm. on Netflix. It's well worth watching. Yeah, I don't think it's quite as good as people say it is, but uh, the suggest is he, 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 his career was a failure after Citizen Kane is a joke. It wasn't. No, no, no. He, he, I he's, suppose... one of the great, he's one of the great creative artists of the 20th century. He, he might, in a kind of interdisciplinary way, actually be the great creative artist of the 20th century if people yeah. pieced all the balls together, yeah. you know? Yeah, uh, I suppose when you've done Citizen Kane, he was 25. Um, yeah, and before yeah. that there was the War of the Worlds broadcast and... Yeah. And the Magnificent Ambersons was destroyed because the studio caught it up and yeah. jumped into... Um, and then touching it, if evil is a masterpiece, he was blackballed and yeah. couldn't make it. I mean, my, you know, and then, you know, his greatest performance, which I think is most relevant for our age, is as Harry Lyme in The Third Man, who is on the reason round, yeah. you know, with the famous speeches mm -hmm. uh, I, I, th th that show the <laughs> insignificant dots to him. And perhaps our governmental and corporate leaders should watch The Third Man. Uh, uh, and Wells' speech in the reason rad, people are not objects of non-Kantian exploitation. They are not objects and dots and specks of insignificance. They are people to be respected with livelihoods, jobs, liberties, rights, and a decent quality of existence. Right. And not just the Borges. David, thank you so much. Uh, not see you next week, okay? Oh, hopefully. Take care. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you. And thanks,